Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Hub and Spoke Aviation and the airline sim newbie guide. So this series is designed to help answer the questions of new players so they can start strong with a base knowledge of airline sim. Today, we're going to be going over the difference between new and used aircraft and the advantages of using one or both throughout the lifetime of your airline. So the first thing we're going to start with is the aircraft used market. This can be found by going to the management page down to the aircraft market page tab. So here you're gonna find a lot of different types of aircraft, whether most of them be used. In some worlds, there are a lot of aircraft from different time periods, ranging from the 60s and sometimes further, and they can be sold by either the airline sim fictional leasing companies or by players themselves. So quickly, you can see initially that this is one of the airline sim companies. It is Air Aircraft Trade and Lease Organization, and it's labeled by an official offer. So that means when you lease it, you don't have to worry. It's coming from the game themselves. So you're not going to have to worry about it being canceled unless you don't pay the leasing. So other than that, typically that's these are what is considered an official offer. You might get lucky. I actually have some offers on this thing, but they're not in this company. So... Uh, let's see if we can find somebody. Okay, so here you see that this is a this is a player and it's not listed as a official offer. This is a player goes by Maple Leasing. So this is one of the players on this world. Um, you can also see an offer of mine currently right here that is being leased out to another player. So basically, these are the airline. These are the these are players leasing, putting up their old aircraft or aircraft that they purchased from the the game and they're putting it up for new for people to buy or to lease from them. So the main difference here is that players can change the prices for other players within to within a certain limit. So for me if I want to lease a aircraft to somebody in in this game, like I have aircraft here and if I want to lease an aircraft, I would go to offer and sell these. And the minimum I can do it is down to 50% of the aircraft's base cost. So whatever the air, this is a brand new A320neo, so you can't really reduce the cost that much. But you got to own the plane first. So these, this plane I actually bought from the from AS. These two 737s are coming from my other company, and so they'll go for a lot cheaper. But a new thing that Airline Sim did was, in order for me to give it to you at this cost, you're going to have to wait 36 hours for it. So a player would have to wait. Or I can offer it up for sale, and you can buy it at this price. The Airline Sim companies that are in this game are not going to do that. The Airline Sim official offers are not going to give you any sort of deal. It is what it is. Uh, it's based on the age of the aircraft typically, and there's been some changes to how that works. So I am not 100% sure I understand how that works, or what they changed overall, but uh, it should be relatively the same. It's mostly based on the age of the aircraft, how much it will cost you, and how long. It, there are, Like I said, there were some changes to the leasing in order to allow for different variables to affect the cost of the aircraft. So on the market, there are aircraft that are for 20 plus years old and often are really cheap. As you can see, this six this is a seven year old 7478i that's listed here, and it costs six million dollars. Which, if you know how much a, a, a base 747 costs, which is around 11 million, that's actually pretty cheap. The in some worlds, alliances or just helpful players will offer these aircraft to newer players to help them start out. So they will often advertise this on the forum. In the server sub forum, so that can be shown here. This is the airline sim community, as you can see. So what you would do is, in order to find something like this, you go down, scroll down to game worlds. Typically, it'll be posted here. So in my case, I'm in Temple Hall, so I would just click this, and this is my server's sub category. This is my server's category of everything that's happening in the server. So some most players use this for role play. This is like he's talking about Red Sun leasing. They'll talk about stuff like there's opportunities in Temple Hall. This is really a good place, but there are usually some alliances will announce. Like here, he's selling his 737-700s, 
And that's usually how you can find a lot of the uh, opportunities in the world and just what is happening in the, in the game world that you're playing in. This goes for all worlds, as you just saw. Every world has one. So you just click, check out, check it out. Most of these, these are ended game worlds. They no longer exist. But these are the ones that are currently active. So this is the LN Sim Discord. Um, you just need to log into this. This is there's a link that's provided in the game. Just go to community and Discord right here, and you can find it. it. You have plenty of players talking in this thing, including myself. So you can find. Usually, this is where I will help other players out, or vice versa. Players will help other players. It's, it's this is also where opportunities can be posted, in terms of uh, places where. There might be opportunities from the game, or there might be something else. Or people are selling their aircraft, is along with, which is what our topic is about. So the downside of used aircraft is pretty much just that. What is, they're used. And as a new airline, I like to refer your business model using used aircraft more like Allegiant Airlines. Many of you guys might be familiar with who they are, and they were, they were in the news a few, a few months back about their, their age of their fleet. Well, as a new airline and airline center, this is kind of model. But typically what you'll see experienced players do is they retire their aircraft at two and a half years. Um, mostly because that is when an aircraft loses its first bar rating in that category. I have a couple of planes that are older than 2.5 years. Here, is an ex here are a couple of examples here. If I were to go to its, its rating which I'm navigating to, scroll over, click flight rating, scroll down, you'll notice that in the aircraft age, it's lost one bar. This aircraft is four years old. Now, in real life, that's really nothing in, in terms of the age of the aircraft. That's actually really young. But in airline sim, everything is kind of accelerated in this regard. So your aircraft start to lose that bar at 2.5 years. And in order to keep... Because this is I, the only reason I have not replaced this aircraft is because it's operating on a domestic route. If it were operating on an international route, I would definitely have replaced it already. But because it's not, I've opted to go ahead and leave it till I can acquire some planes, um, which will be happening. But basically, that the, the point is that you can see that it will affect your rating, and it's affecting mine. But since the majority of my fleet is not like that, it's not affecting it as much as it could be. As you can see, the average age of my fleet is less than a year old. And in airline sim, that's really, that's a big deal in airline sim as, because since ratings are based partially on the aircraft age when, you regard, when talking about your flights. As a new airline, you'll be getting planes, if you're ordering from the used market, you're going to be getting planes that are already past that limit typically because that's when players replace them. Me leasing out this brand new plane is not typical. I'm doing this to help out another player. Typically, you'll see planes that are usually 15. Usually, they'll be more than two and a half years old, depending on how fast the player was able to replace them. In this case, he's got some brand new planes that he's put up. But in general, that is not the case. Typically, you will see a plane that is generally 20 years old and older than that. And those will really impact your rating. If you see how bad their age rating is, it's usually well into the red. And that's unless you're starting in a market that has no competition and it with no within its domestic market, at least you're going to find that that's not going to be ideal. So for an airline, it would be it'll be hard to see at the beginning, at least for a new airline. But as your airline matures, you're going to quickly see that newer aircraft, you're going to need to be replacing newer aircraft very quickly. Before I get the question in the comments, what about cargo carriers? I'm going to answer it now. Cargo carriers are not affected by a rating like that. In uh, when it comes to cargo airplanes, that's not even a factor. I don't have any cargo airplanes to show you this. But in general, if a, if a plane does not carry cargo, the age doesn't matter. So when cargo, cargo companies, cargo planes get rated differently, you can see that this MD-11F, which is an old aircraft, and <laughs> this MD-11F doesn't have a passenger rating. You go back to the MD-11, and you see the popularity of passengers is there. This is just the upfront rating. This is not show the other ratings unless you're operating it, but in, you can see that right there. 
that immediately there is no rating for that, which the populated with passengers is part of your image. There are some other examples to include the Dash 8 and the 77C. The seven, the Q, this Q400 is a combi, meaning that it carries passengers and cargo, as you can kind of see it depicted. But you're still getting a populated with passenger rate. You're basically, you're basically just given a cargo hold in the, event, in the case of the Dash 8. Whereas instead, with the 737C, which is a convertible 737 to a cargo variant, you're actually given the ability to convert it to a freighter, in which case this would no longer apply. As you can see, this is popular with cargo carriers. But you'll see, as you, the longer you operate and use the aircraft, the more it's going to cost. And the more that you acquire, the more it's going to cost. So typically, you need to replace them quickly in order to offset that cost. Uh, the cargo airlines on this server do operate most of the MD-80s. I don't know how that affects them. The only way I would find out is by asking them. But it's never really interested me, but I know that as, using older aircraft does cost more money. And maybe with cargo carriers, the profits offset that cost, and that might be the reason why they continue to do it. So, like I said, they're great. Used aircraft are great if you're starting in an empty empty large market that you're trying to fill so if, say Saudi Arabia for example or maybe the, not even the United States but maybe someplace like Indonesia maybe Australia depending on the time China depending on the time once again any of those any of those any of those countries that have massive domestic markets that may not have anybody in them Iran is another good example then that might be a good time to use used aircraft However, for the most part, if you're entering a market and there's even one other player next to you, it's better to operate and it's better to acquire younger aircraft that are less than 2.5 years old. And, or, and hopefully you go into a world that has an alliance like my own that will provide you with some help with new, new and used aircraft that will at a lower cost as for you as a player. Also, you might want to use, make take used aircraft if you're one of those that love to role play in airline sim, which there's a lot of, as you saw from the community. If you want to role play, then that's another option for you, and that might be the reason why you do it. But just so you know, you will not. It's going to be. There are some worlds that are. There's a world out there that uses old aircraft, I believe. I don't remember which one it is, but uh, you can go out and use old aircraft as that as you wish. But for the in the most part, that is not the best route to take an airline sim. So, if you're entering a market with a lot of competing carriers, new or established, ordering new aircraft may be the best option, like I said before. So, as with used, air, as with used planes, there are advantages and disadvantages. New aircraft have the benefit of being factory new with no age penalties until they reach, like I said, two and a half years. So you can we go navigate here to the one of the newest aircraft on the market, day through 20. Day through 20 Neil, you see this. You got all your ratings here. So new aircraft have the benefit of being you can also pick so basically you can pick up the latest in technology here. However, in efficiency, although you won't see most of that in airline sim. So maybe the benefits of fuel costs. You're not going to see most of that in airline sim. It's my understanding that airline sim, when you're flying your route, no matter how full or empty the aircraft is, you're still burning the same amount of gas. So you're not going to really see the, the, ineff the efficiencies of maybe operating NEO as much as you will, as you probably would in the real world. Although they allow you to choose a manufacturer that you would like to order from in terms of location. So as you saw from the used aircraft tab, you can see that a lot of the aircraft are in random places. Like this guy right here is based in Canada, but his plane is in Hong, his plane is in Tokyo, one is in Beijing, one's in well, that's in Toulouse. One you got planes everywhere. They're just everywhere. So you're gonna you're gonna based from if you're based in Australia and a plane is say in Greenland, for example, it's gonna take a while for that plane to get to you from wherever. You might want to choose a closer aircraft manufacturer. But in Australia, there really isn't one, so and you're you're kind of stuck there. But say you're in the United States, well, if you want to quick if you want quick delivery, you might want to go with a Bombardier and a 
Boeing fleet rather than going with an Airbus fleet, since you don't, since that'll take you longer to acquire, to obtain those aircraft and get them working for you. So choosing an aircraft manufacturer close to you might reduce the time that it takes for the aircraft to arrive at your designated hub after its production. So just, so and just think about it. If you're a passenger and you're getting onto a brand new 737, what is your first impression? Using that new aircraft smell and everything else. Well, if you put yourself in the AS passenger's mind, that's pretty much exactly how the rating system works. That's why you you see ratings decrease as the plane gets older. So what are the disadvantages of operating on with new aircraft? Well, there are a couple. The main one is price. They are typically more expensive than you going and getting a new aircraft. They will be more expensive. That is a fact. This plane costs $60 million. Typically, a used aircraft will cost less. You'll be at it as a new player just starting. You're going to be you're usually not going to get a lot of new aircraft. Even with the the benefits that airline sim gives you, it's going to take a lot longer to. It's going to, you're not going to be able to acquire 10 new A320 Neos. You're going to get $10 million. This is each of these will cost you somewhere around six million each. No point in being. Each of these will cost you around $3 million, $3 million each to get. With your initial $10 million uh, allotment of money, you're only going to be acquired three of them. Maybe if you go to the used market, find an aircraft that's two years old, you might be able to get six, if, depending on who's offering them. The second disadvantage is the production time. The A320 Neo takes about 21 hours, and it's a similar thing with the Max, so you're not going to get anything different. They're produced at 20, basically it's produced at one every 21 hours. So basically it takes a day. So when you order one of these, you're taking just short of a day to get it before you can actually put it to use. The backlog, the backlog system does not exist. You can see there, if I can find an aircraft that has a massive backlog and there really aren't any in a world like this. So you would, if the, air, you, if the aircraft had a backlog, you would see it in the order book, as you can see here. This guy ordered them, but he's just going to get them every 21 hours. So it's not his, the fact that he's ordered X amount of A320 is not going to affect the delivery time. He doesn't have a specific, he has a, he gets a specific delivery date, but that's not because that's just 21 hours apart. So 524, 21 hours after that is 2203. That's pretty much the reason, that's how airline sim works. So five other players ordered 50 more A320 Neos, he would still get his at the same rate. The other thing is the production location. While this can be a benefit to you as a player where it's produced, it however can also be a detriment. Because when you say, when you need that massive order of aircraft, it's typically gonna take a lot longer. 21 hours is a long time if I need, if I'm trying to expand or if an opening just made itself available in my country and I need a lot of planes quickly. Well, here's the thing. There is a, the backlog does exist to an extent if you're ordering them. If you're ordering, say, I'm, I want to order 50 A320 Neos. Well, they're going to be produced at one every 21 hours in Toulouse. But I can also, instead of me just ordering A320s, I can order A319s too. A319s are produced in Hamburg. So while I'm still ordering from Airbus, I'm going to, they're being manufactured in a different spot. At the same rate. So if I order these A319s, I will get them every 21 hours instead of me having to wait for all my A320s to be delivered and then the A319s will be produced. They will be produced at the same time. That's the advantage of operating with an Airbus fleet. And that's why some players will opt for an Airbus fleet because you can get them faster in the event that you need a, a large growth. As you can see from Boeing, this is not the case. The only plane that is produced outside of that is the 737-700. It's produced in Renton. If I wanted to order, I can. if I need to, I can just order the 700. But the 800 and the 900, which are the more popular variants, since they are more profitable, they are both produced at, in Boeing Field. So in ordering them, you're going to be held to, if I order 50 a 3 737 900 ERs and 50 Max 8s or 
seven eight hundreds, I have to wait for the fifty nine hundred ERs to be delivered before the eight hundreds will be. That is the disadvantage of operating new aircraft. Is basically production location and cost. So one other thing I would like to note regarding the correlation with aircraft entering airlines in from the real world. So the developer will only put aircraft into airline sim once the aircraft enters commercial service. So, so it, for example, we have the E-190 E-2 family. Now, currently, we only have the E-190 E-2, but the E-195 just reached type certification recently. However, it has not been put into this game because the aircraft has not entered service with an airline yet. There's other examples of this in the game right now. We had the A330neo. That it, once that entered service, it was immediately put into the game. Similar thing with the A350-1000 and the 737 MAX 9. As soon as those entered service, they were put into the game. Basically, if you're looking at that, that brand new aircraft that you're just like, oh, I'm, ho I'm hoping that it'll... Don't, there's no point in bugging the developer. That is the system of which they use. Whether I disagree with it, whether I agree or disagree with it, doesn't matter. I mean, to me, it makes sense. If it doesn't, if it's not a commercial service, no point in putting it in this game. So, I, I see the reason. So that's just, just know, for all you new players out there, just know that that is the reason why you may not see the Max 10, the Max 7. Maybe even other versions, the A330-800, just because they are in, just because they're in development, does not mean that they'll enter airline sim immediately until they, once they enter commercial service. So as I mentioned, I will talk about airline image and ratings in a future video. I'm trying to do this as chronologically as possible, so that as you're starting your airline, you can watch each of these videos and learn at a, at a successive rate, so that you're not just, um, you're not going to be bouncing around. So, as usual, I want to thank you all for watching this video. Leave a comment down below if you have requests or if you have feedback or questions. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.